Hey gang, so this is a new video that I've just made. Uh, so you guys that are watching this in 2017 in December, this is a brand new video for you guys. Um, other people, uh, this is going to be an older video like the other videos that I've made. Uh, but anyway, the last unit, final unit we're going to be looking at is going to be the contemporary world. Uh, what's the world like today? You spent a lot of time on this in geography last year, <clears throat> so we're not going to spend a ton of time on it. So I'm going to kind of hit the high points today. So we're going to be looking at a couple of things. Today's video is mostly going to focus on the difference between developed countries and developing countries and some of the issues that are facing those. Tomorrow night's video is, or the weekend's video, whichever, whenever you're watching it, is going to be focused on the rise of economic interdependence and a concept known as globalization. And finally, Monday night's video, we're going to be looking at terrorism and the impact that terrorism has had. Well, first of all, I want you to take a look at this map. Uh, this is a map of the world according to income. Uh, countries with higher income are illustrated in red, uh, and the lower income are illustrated in blue. So one of the things that you notice about countries with lower income per capita, or per person, rather, <coughs> is that, one, they are in areas, one, that are close to the equator, uh, so they have a very tropical or hot climate, and two, uh, they tend to be landlocked. The countries that are the most poor tend to be landlocked. And we're, let's talk about some of those differences between developed and developing countries. Developed countries would uh, have higher income. Developing countries would have lower income. So let's first talk about the ge uh, geographic differences in terms of physical geography. Uh, developed countries have lots of access to trade routes. They're close to oceans. They have, uh, they're close to overland trade routes. And they have lots of uh, diverse geography, which means they have lots of natural resources. Developing countries are very limited uh, in access to trade routes. They are often landlocked, as I mentioned before, and their physical geography makes it very difficult for them to have a wide variety of natural resources. Economically, developed countries have lots of technology, lots of well-developed infrastructure. That means roads, um, communication systems, etc., uh, internet access. <clears throat> and they also have a high gross domestic product and per capita income, as I showed you on that map. Gross domestic product, by the way, is the total value of all goods and services produced in a country in a year. Developing countries have very limited technology or at least um, very unequal access to technology. They have extremely weak infrastructure, meaning they have a difficult time communicating from one uh, part of the country to another, both communication and travel. And they have low gross domestic product and low per capita income. What are they like socially? Well, developed countries have a high literacy rate. Generally, it's well over 90%, generally over 95%. And their life expectancy is over 65 or 70 years of age. Most adults are highly educated, meaning that they have at least a high school diploma, um, and many even have a college degree. And there's a very low infant mortality rate, which means that babies below the year of one age, uh, below one year of old, uh, typically live uh, to see their uh, adulthood. Developing countries have very little or lower life, uh, lower literacy rate. Their literacy rate would be somewhere between um, 60 and 80 percent typically. They have a lower life expectancy, sometimes as low as 40 years old um, or even lower in some extreme cases. Um, they have very little education beyond eighth grade. Um, and in fact, most of that is focused only on males in many developing countries. <clears throat> Demographically, what does their population look like? Develop countries either have slow population growth, which means their populations aren't growing very large, or they have a negative population growth, which means their populations are actually shrinking uh, naturally. Now, that doesn't account for immigration, people coming into the country, that's a natural growth rate. Uh, their populations are much older in developed countries, and they're much urban, meaning they live in cities in a much higher rate. Um, developing countries have a much higher population growth rate. Uh, their families are larger than in developed countries, uh, and often people immigrate or move around a lot. Uh, they're younger because they have that higher population uh, growth rate. That means they also have a lot of younger people. And while they may have many people living in a rural setting now, they most people are moving to cities to find more work and more opportunities. So what are the problems or issues facing both developed and developing countries? <coughs> One issue facing developing countries and developed countries are the issue of migration. Migration simply means people moving from one place to another. In this case, it's people moving out of developing countries or being pushed out and being pulled into developed countries. Um, and there are two kinds of people that move. 
Uh, one kind is a refugee. A refugee is someone who is forced to leave their country of origin or their home country uh, for some reason, uh, such as war, poverty, or natural disaster, or political persecution or religious persecution. Um, refugees are fleeing their home country because the situation in their home country is dire. The situation in Syria over the last several years has been very bad, and so many people from Syria have migrated to Europe uh, in order to seek uh, asylum and freedom from basically the fear of death. However, uh, there are also guest workers. Some people leave developing countries to go to developed countries in order to work. Um, they are working for jobs. They will take their money. They will work uh, low-wage jobs or what are considered low-wage jobs in the developed country uh, but are pretty good jobs in, the, in terms of the developing country and making money, and they will take that money and send it back. <clears throat> so another conflict or another issue facing both that we'll spend a lot of time in, in, on, in class are ethnic and religious conflicts. So I'm just going to hit the highlights. Tomorrow we're going to map them in class, but I'm going to hit the highlights here. In the Middle East, there are two basic conflicts. Uh, one conflict is between Sunni Muslim and Shia Muslim, and the other conflict is between Israelis and Palestinians. Uh, so uh, Palestinians are Muslim, Israelis are Jewish, and there's a conflict over land. Uh, the Sunni and Shia uh, essentially disagree over which is the proper version of Islam. In Northern Ireland, there has been conflict, although there is much less conflict. Um, today, between the Protestants and the Catholics, now there is peace um, between Protestants and Catholics. Uh, and it's essentially a difference between Christianity, versions of Christianity. Now, it's they're not arguing, in this case, who the right version of a Christian is. They're basically arguing over land. Protestants in Northern Ireland had traditionally, in English Protestants, when they uh, invaded Ireland, treated the Catholics like second-class citizens. <clears throat> and so there was a lot of resentment there. It was mostly about control over land and not about re actual religious differences. The Balkan Peninsula, we've talked about, sparked the cause of World War I. Uh, there was conflict in Yugoslavia and southeastern Europe, and they still have a lot of conflict today because of the, the, the complications of having a lot of different ethnic groups all together. Lastly, but not leastly, is the area uh, known as the Horde of Africa. Or I'm sorry, there's two more. <clears throat> the Horde of Africa. Um, the Horde of Africa is the area of Africa close to the Arabian Peninsula. And some conflicts there include uh, Rwanda, which we've talked about the genocide there. There's a conflict in the Sudan between northern and southern Sudan and a group who wants to control it and a group that wants independence. And then Somalia, uh, which we'll talk about more in class. Lastly, not, but not leastly, is conflict in South Asia. Uh, one area of conflict in South Asia, Asia is Sri Lanka. Uh, there is an independent uh, movement uh, amongst uh, Buddhists, and they want independence from the Hindu-controlled country. And lastly, but not leastly, there is conflict over Kashmir, which we have talked about uh, between Pakistan and India, and has led to some pretty uh, tense uh, situations. Uh, also, uh, technologies. As new technologies arise uh, between developed and developing countries, there's a lot of uh, issues surrounding that. For example, developed countries have a lot of access to technology, and they have a lot of wealth as generated by new technologies. Uh, and so what that does is that creates more wealth for developing countries, or developed countries rather, and less wealth for developed countries. And so uh, because the developing countries don't have access, they also have a more difficult time catching up. Um, a good example of that is simply access to the internet and phones. Uh, developed countries, it's almost assumed that you can access the internet. Uh, whereas in developed countries, it's more of a big deal and they have a more difficult time accessing it, especially in rural areas. Um, there's also new <coughs> conflicts or issues facing everyone with cloning and ethical technologies as we begin to be able to clone things like sheep and pigs and dogs. Uh, we face ethical challenges in should we do that? How far should we extend this? Should we uh, clone to ensure a safe, reliable, or steady, reliable food source? Uh, or should we extend it to clone in order to uh, cure human diseases that we are facing now? So uh, today's video focused on the difference between developed and developing countries and uh, some of the major issues facing both. Um, so we will talk about that in class, and I hope you have, guys. Have a great day. Bye.